Vancouver Engineering Project. I'm the team lead, Andy Hernandez. I'm Michelle. Uh, my name is Ben Dewey. I'm Chris. So a bit of background about our project is we're kind of researching and looking into an MK32 burner, which outputs 3.2 megawatts of power and it uses propane as its fuel. Um, our motivation is that it's very research heavy, so there hasn't been much um, research conducted on airborne burners in general. So we work with our advisor to kind of investigate the combustion behavior. So um, the rig was built, so it's a jet flame that's about 20 feet high. The rig was built for it last, the beginning of the end of last year. And so we're using that. So the dimensions are here, so it's 10 feet high. So there's, it's 20 feet high and split into two sections. And I'll have a picture in later slides demonstrating that. So for the total height of 20 feet, which accommodates the flame that we're studying. Um, so last quarter, we mostly focused on our instrumentation and making sure um, all our all our uh, the gas analyzers that we're using was working fine because we want to trust this data. But um, this was all new to us, so it's just setting it for validation because the gas analyzer we're using, which is over there, is used specifically for tailpipe emissions of cars, so it's under a closed system. So all of last quarter was investigating if it works for our desired system, which is outdoor, open to air, uh, log dilution occurring. So we did tests for that. And our error from last quarter was plus or minus 5%, which we're going to go, we're going to continue using this. So this is our test stand uh, outside engineering gateway. Um, it's 20 feet high. The dimensions are there. Um, our analyzer probe location is at that duct, which is a foot above. So it's 20 feet, one feet high. So the flame ends at about 18 feet, and then the the exhaust carries over. So that's where we're doing all our um, the ga our gas increment is in there. Um, our burner is three feet from the ground, and this is the burner that we're specifically studying. So the coils is where the liquid propane comes in, and we have a pilot flame that's used to initiate to heat up the liquid because. Um, combustion is more efficient and when you start with the gaseous fuel because then you don't have to focus on the energy to convert it to gas. Um, so then here's the kind of just the structure of it. We have a piezo igniter or the piezo igniter comes with the burner and that's what starts the pilot flame and we have the main valve that shoots it to be the 20 feet. So um, the goal of the project is to Again, study the combustion behavior of the burner and find the, the, the burner efficiency as well as the emissions. Um, so our objectives are to investigate um, factors of operation and design that can um, affect the efficiency and emissions. So basically optimize the operation that is used in, in real life. Um, uh, uh, also to comprehend the calculation from the gas analyzer because we do know it uses a temperature calculation, so it compares ambient air and then the temperature of the exhaust. So it uses that temperature difference to do efficiency calculations, and it utilizes the gas analyzer knows which fuel we're using, so using the heating value, it, that's how it's doing the calculations, but there's a lot of constants given to us from the company that are kind of unknown, so we're looking into literature for that. Um, we are also recording the thermodynamic process exactly occurring between the gas tank and the burner, so the whole traveling fuel, what goes on inside the coils of the burner, and what phase the fuel is actually burning. If it's a mixture of liquid and gas, is it all gas, is it liquid? So that's what we're investigating. And um, also, since it's very research heavy, um, an objective this quarter was to write a conference paper for the U.S. National Combustion Meeting, so that was submitted early in the quarter, so January 31st. So um, our management, so we have our advisors, Dr. Don Rankin and Dr. Alice Chen. Um, so then I'm the team lead, so a lot of the communication goes to me, and then I split it up to our team members. So we have two 189 members, Michelle and Fajada, one research member, which is Chris. And we have weekly meetings with Dr. John Rickens, so we meet each week and just discuss the open-ended questions of the, of the project. So 
for this quarter, we basically did the experimental testing of a certain parameter, which was the flight burst. So we did one 5, 10, and 15 second burst, and we did all the data acquisition for that and analysis. So we used that all for the conference paper that was due January 31st. Um, we have the thermodynamic analysis of each system that's coming up that we need to do that we recently um, discussed with Dr. Jen Rankin. Um, we're gonna do thermal couple testing of the burner because initially we do not have thermal couple at the burner. And so we're gonna do that to see what the temperature is to see how if it's at a temperature where propane would be gas or liquid. Um, and then we also have the NRX 700 um, efficiency calculation or equation that we're investigating. Um, there's two other groups with Dr. Deb Rankin that uses this gas analyzer, so we're working in conjunction with them. And then um, kind of right at the end of the quarter, we have our conference presentation at the in Pasadena to discuss the findings that we had. Um, so for the requirements that we have this quarter, uh, first we have the testing plan uh, that needs to be compatible with the testing rig that was uh, designed from the from last year. So we had the we had the uh, called the tray that has the burner on it. We marked the floor to have a specific spot, uh, the same spot to do testing all the time. Uh, we had the parameters, which are the flame burst times investigated uh, by contacting the company that's uh, providing the bur burner and the propane type. We, uh, we called them and uh, we asked about the burst times, uh, what's the most efficient burst times that they have. They told us it's a range between one second to 15. So that's the range we're working in. And, uh, uh, and we also uh, want to optimize the efficiency. By doing that, we're gonna have a testing plan to compare the different parameters and see which parameter we need to change in order to make the efficiency better for future testing. Uh, yeah. Uh, then also we have here we have the budget. Our this quarter the budget was fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, last quarter we didn't spend much on uh, we didn't spend much from the budget, but this quarter we uh, went a bit heavy or like kind of heavy because uh, one of our uh, thermocouples uh, burnt. Uh, we got destroyed, so we got a heat shield sleeve. That uh, now every time we test, we use the heat shield sleeve to to make sure that the, the thermocouples don't get burned. Uh, we also got a thermocouple reader. Thermocouple reader is used to transfer the data we have from the gas analyzer onto our, our software to analyze the data for the run. And we also got thermocouples, as Candy said, to, uh, to put them at, to put them at the burner and. Uh, do uh, thermodynamic uh, analysis. Uh, so what we have left over is about 84% of our budget, which is good, <coughs> we think, but uh, we might spend uh, a bit more uh, towards the end of this quarter. Um, here you can see the chart, what we use. Uh, this quarter we focus a lot on uh, testing the burner itself and determining its efficiency. And from the left uh, graph here, you can see that this is our graph for measuring efficiency at 1 second, 5 second, 10 second, 15 second bursts. So as you can see here that the highest efficiency is at 1 second. Uh, we, between each uh, test cycle, we allow the system to cool down by giving it 10 minutes to go back to ambient temperature so that previous uh, tests wouldn't affect uh, the future tests. And on the right side, you can see that this is, uh, this is our testing of five second intervals with five second in between each uh, test. So it's a, it's, a, it's a continuous test over time, over about a minute. So we did five seconds burst, five seconds stop, then five seconds burst again. So as you can see, that efficiency decreases over time. And I would like to note specifically for uh, the 15 second one on the left side, that there is a little bump at the, in the orange, which will be talked about more by Michelle. Oh, uh, also kind of that I wanted to know is the 10 minute interval between testing is because of the uh, efficiency calculation I mentioned earlier, which is comparing the ambient to the temperature of the exhaust. So we want that temperature of the exhaust at the top to fully cool down and regulate with the software. And then, as he said, that the cycling 
graph shows that there is definitely a dependence of that temperature for the efficiency calculations. So that's just a verification that doing the 10 minutes is a good way to go about testing. Okay, so for more on our progress, so we completed the conference paper. It was due on January 31st. It was approximately 10 pages and it kind of just summarized all of our graphs and the research and testing that has previously been done in regards to our project. And then here we also have a couple images of the flame. So we are using videos of the flame in order to kind of uh, account for the characteristics of the initial plume. So this is like the initial plume of the flame when it's first ignited and this would be um, after it has been ignited for a little bit longer. So we're looking into the flame velocity and how fast this plume is um, reaching the top of the break. Yeah, so um, for the conference paper, I also wanted to mention that, uh, so I was very focused on the gas analyzer and doing the um, understanding of the calculations done. Um, Michelle did a lot of writing for that, and she did a lot of the uh, um, summarization of uh, what's going on with the burner. Chris did a lot of calculations as well, and Baha did a lot of um, calculations and setting up the equipment. And so all the experiments are done with all four of us, because there's only four of us, and it's we need someone to be doing the monitoring of the programming and then someone to light the flame. And yeah, it's just, it needs four people. Okay, so, so currently we're kind of, or our next step is we're looking into investigating this 15 second burn time. So as Chris pointed out, there is this dip here in the 15 second burn where the efficiency kind of drops off. And we're kind of looking into figuring out if that has to do with the pressure in the tank. So over this 15 seconds burn, the pressure loss is decreasing, so then it's lowering the efficiency. And we're also going to use the thermocouples to measure the temperature of the coils in the burner in order to determine if the fuel inside is of the, li of the liquid or gas phase, because that would also affect the efficiency calculations. Thank you. Thank you.